said, welcome everybody. It's uh, the left five time. Wait a minute, now that clock doesn't say five. That's wrong. That clock's wrong. Oh. Battery's not getting weak. It is 504. <laughs> you know I'm sorry. Somebody fix that clock. You're going to watch time fly, throw it out the door. Uh, well, thanks for everybody being here. Uh, you know, I wish I could say it's been a nice sunny day and a beautiful blue sky, but it has. It's been kind of misty and rainy. But you know what? In this beautiful country we live in, that's okay. Because every now and then we have to have rain and enjoy the sunshine. I'm glad y'all all made it safe on these sleep roads, and I pray you a safe return when you leave here. We'd like to go ahead and get started. <coughs> We're going to start by having a public hearing. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'll turn that over to our <coughs> illustrious lawyer, our counsel. Our counsel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight we're going to have a public hearing regarding application number T15000002. Uh, the application is made by the city of Tifton. Uh, before I open up the public hearing, I'll try to uh, start into the public hearing. I would like everybody to know that the city of Tifton has written public hearing procedures. The City of Tifton standards for exercising zoning powers and a copy of Georgia Conflict of Interest laws are available to hand out and are posted for public review. Uh, the matter for public hearing tonight concerns an amendment to the City of Tifton Land Development Code, particularly to amend Chapter 4, Section 4.03.31e of the City of Tifton Land Development Code so as to allow the location of tattoo parlors and body piercing establishments within 300 feet of a restaurant and to prohibit the location of a tattoo parlor or body piercing establishment within 300 feet of a bar or entertainment establishment. Uh, prior to going into public, uh, taking public comment, I'd like to ask some conflict of interest questions of the council. Um, have any of the applicants, which of course is the city of Tipton, for opponents of the application contributed at least $250 to any of the campaigns for election during the past two years? No. Do you or any members of your family own property that would be impacted by this text amendment application, whether it be a positive or negative impact? No. no. Remind me of the location. Uh, basically, Mayor, this is going to be a text amendment that's going to allow tattoo parlors within 300 feet of any restaurant. Uh, although this is not a zoning classification or zoning matter, I thought since this text amendment may affect properties that you may own that may be located near a tattoo parlor, I thought I'd go ahead and ask these, these conflict of interest questions. Well, I own a lot of property downtown, Main Street. I just, I, I don't have any tattoo thing, but I have a place that's quasi bar and possibly a future restaurant. Since there's I, no specific property that I, you know, that's going to affect you, I'd say that that's, that you would not have a conflict to consider okay. the matter. It has to be zoned. Okay, so I won't have a conflict. Okay, I'm sorry. And do you or any members of your family have an interest in a business that would be impacted by this text amendment, whether it be a positive or negative impact? No. No. That would mean if one of my family members had another parlor or had a, if, if, if one of your family members had a restaurant yeah. that was, you know, near a task two parlor, that would, that would. Right. I'm just being careful. I that. understand. I, I appreciate that. A lot of stuff places, but I before, think I'd be okay. The point that Ms. Martin was making, uh, these aren't allowed in commercial downtown zone areas, so you have no conflict. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, prior to uh, <clears throat> taking any public comment, I'll let Mr. Crow uh, describe exactly what this application is about. Thank you, Council. According to the original uh, Land Development Code, Chapter Four, uh, we had listed that a tattoo park or body piercing establishment had to be 300 feet away from any establishment selling alcohol out of drink. We're requesting by the city, by staff, is requesting to change that to uh, allow that to say that um, that a restaurant that serves alcohol by the drink could be allowed, but that a tattoo parlor or body piercing establishment could not be within 300 foot of a bar or an establishment or an entertainment establishment whose major sales was alcohol. Uh, the reason for that is to uh, basically to be able to allow restaurants uh, as businesses to be allowed within proximity of a. a tattoo parlor. We feel that the difference between an alcohol selling establishment that's their major concern and a restaurant that may sell an alcohol drink with their meal is a completely different setup. And yes, 
much it is the state to allow a restaurant in the town, not as much to deregulate that two parts. But any questions? Just want to be sure about that zoning. That would not affect the zoning that I'm in because one of my tenants has a bar. No, sir, it does not affect zoning technically at all, but it is a the zoning characteristic is what it changes. So nobody could put a tattoo parlor up on Main Street? That is correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, first, I'll hear anybody. There's anybody here that would like to speak in favor of the application? Yes, sir. Yes, I'd like to speak. My name's Chris Perella. Uh, I'm with Dick's Wings and Grill. I'm the restaurant on 82 there that's coming into town. I wanted to, we're really looking forward to coming in uh, into town here. Uh, what I'd like to do is to hand out a little bit of, of information just so everybody gets to know who we are and what we're doing coming into town. There's, there's some core beliefs about what our establishment, what our restaurant uh, does and how we do conduct our business that I think is important, especially when um, you know, we're, we're coming into a town that, that doesn't know us. So um, you guys, uh, this is uh, Tyler Sylvester and Cindy Mathis. Uh, they're our managers here. Uh, with us, uh, general manager and manager. Uh, will you guys hand out, hand these out for me, so everybody can kind of get to uh, get to know what our menu is and and see uh, a little bit about us. Um, what I'd like to do is is uh, start by saying that uh, we the reason why we're in favor of this is because uh, our establishment is is a family oriented restaurant. Uh, in our logo, we actually have Dick's Wings and Grill Family Fun Foodery. Uh, family comes first. That's our core belief. That's who we are. That's what our franchise is all about. Uh, I can say that with, with some authority because I feel that that uh, the, the way we conduct our business, there's a couple things that we do. First and foremost, kids eat free on Sunday. Every Sunday. Why do we do that? Because we want our families to come out to eat. We're not serving. We have alcohol. We do sell alcohol. It only represents 15% of our business. But it can affect our business if we don't sell it. So um, this is what we believe in. We believe in getting families out there, bring your kids in, have dinner in our establishment, and make it affordable. Uh, we also do something else on Tuesdays. We have Takeout Tuesdays, and this is so that the families, again, can come by for $20, have a meal, take it home to their kids, feed four people, uh, and and. Be with your family. This is not a. This is not to drive our business in the restaurant. It's to drive families to so we become part of their family. So again, we have a, another day. We do uh, on Thursdays. We do all you can eat wings. Another night to bring the gang out, watch some television, and also eat with your family. You know, we want to make it affordable. Uh, you don't see any drinks on any of the stuff that we have. Is because most of our specials are done like this. 80 percent, 80 to 85% of our business is all about food. So um, I, I think that the, the amendment that you have recognizes the fact the difference between a restaurant and a tattoo uh, restaurant and a bar. Uh, we are all about a restaurant. The bar happens to be in the building. Uh, people like to go watch television and that's the environment that we have, but you'll see that our bar and our patio is set up so that it, kids can be on the patio watch TV, the dining room and everything is all open. You'll see that when you come and come try dinner with us. So, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, we, we'd love to, to answer them for you because I think that, that uh, you know, we're, we're just happy to be here and we're, uh, the team is excited. Uh, we hope to be, uh, with this thing going through, uh, we hope to uh, be open by the end of the month. So, uh, anybody have any questions for me? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else like to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone here that likes to speak in opposition to the application? Mayor, there being no further public comment, I'd ask that the public hearing be closed. It's closed. <coughs> I need a point of order that way. So by them speaking for this, when we vote on this at the end of the meeting, <coughs> this will affect whether they come or not, is that correct? Uh, basically, the the ordinance that you'll be considering during the cult meeting affects whether or not they'll be able to serve alcohol or not. Okay. All right. Because the location of the tattoo parlor, as it currently stands, in proximity within 300 feet of a restaurant, 
is prohibited as far as serving alcohol. And so what the ordinance is seeking to do is maintain the 300 feet uh, restriction right. between a bar and an entertainment establishment from a tattoo parlor, but it removes the prohibition of a restaurant from being within 300 feet of a tattoo parlor. Okay. The, the, the logic being that the concern always was that people would get intoxicated and, and go next door and get a tattoo. Uh, staff does not believe that that is the danger associated with a restaurant as it would be for a bar. Yeah. I okay. think everybody should understand now that in the crowd. So that sounds good. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, sir. We're going to start with the discussion of items and we're going to move to number one. <coughs> The discussion of the ordinance to amend the charter by Holland Road. Uh, Rob, please. All right, Mayor, let me get that to you. Basically, back, uh, I believe it was 2000. Back on May the 6th of 2002, uh, the city council met in order to change their fiscal year from October 1 to July 1. And uh, the reason for that change being that that's what the, the county was on that fiscal year of July 1, the state was on that fiscal year for July 1. It made things a lot uh, easier if, if they went to a July 1 fiscal year. Uh, at that meeting on May the 6th of 2002, uh, this, uh, the, a resolution was considered uh, to change the fiscal year to July 1, and it was voted on, it was voted on unanimously, uh, but upon review of the ordinance, it appeared that it was not executed either by the mayor or by the city clerk. So we're, we have two things going here. Uh, one is to go ahead and adopt the ordinance fixing our fiscal year to July 1. So we had that signed and, and in the paperwork. It'll actually, I, I've actually created a new section you know, for the code of ordinances, so the, you know, when we have the code um, uh, redone, it'll actually have an ordinance in there for setting our fiscal year to July 1. The other thing that you'll see, uh, and maybe, is this, uh, it's one and two, I'm kind of talking about it both at the same yeah. time. One, uh, in the charter, it also provides for uh, the requirement that the budget be submitted and finalized by October 1. Well, again, because the fiscal year was changed to July 1, the charter also needs to be amended to reflect that July 1 is when all the uh, budgets have to be prepared and submitted. So that, as you all know, when we get July 1, we hit that deadline and we're all scurrying to get it done. Basically, that's because that's what's required. And so again, because you have it in the charter, uh, we have to change the charter to July 1. And then, of course, we need to go ahead and formally adopt a new resolution, new ordinance, setting our fiscal year to July 1. The ordinance also uh, basically ratifies all the actions that have been taken by the city council since, uh, since July, uh, May of 2002, as we have been operating on a fiscal year since that time. So that's, that's all of that in a nutshell, both number one and number two is just a charter amendment. And actually, the charter amendment is gonna have to be uh, advertised and published for three, three weeks and then we'll be able to vote on these. Uh, they'll be advertised in the month of April, and we can uh, look at, uh, it'll be read. The first reading will be the meeting in, uh, in April. Our second meet, reading will be in May for the Charter Amendment, and we can adopt both the Charter Amendment and the ordinance at the same time in May. Okay. Clear as mud? Clear, it's clear. Is everybody clear on it? Well, so we have just uh, had on one and two. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item number three is a discussion of order providing for an amendment in, to the land development code. <clears throat> That's to remove clubs and lodges, lodges, private as a permissible use in the downtown commercial zoning district. That's me again. Uh, yes. Uh, this basically uh, developed because of one of these seminars that I went to uh, several weeks ago, there is a federal law whereby you cannot discriminate against religious organizations and, um, and you have to treat religious organizations the same as you treat any other non-religious organization. 
currently uh, we do not allow religious facilities in downtown commercial. We, it is allowed, uh, downtown commercial could be utilized for clubs, lodges, and civic organizations. Because those, those type of organizations and clubs are very similar to a religious organization, by, by not allowing a religious organization, but allowing a civic organization or a lodge in downtown commercial, basically we are violating federal law. So in order to treat similar you know, organizations the same, both secular and non-secular, that's why we're, we are amending the, uh, the text you know, to prohibit clubs, lodges, in downtown commercial, so we're treating those type of organizations the same as a religious organization to come, so we're not uh, discriminating and violating the federal law. It's called RANLUPA, is the name of the, the act, and it's, um, you, can, you can zone, certainly we, we've, uh, we allow religious organizations, religious facilities in many, many of our zoning districts. We just, they're just not allowed in downtown commercial or heavy industrial. Uh, so we're not, in that sense, we certainly are not discriminating from a zoning standpoint, but we still have to treat non-secular and secular organizations and religious facilities the same. And that's basically what this accomplishes to make sure that we're, we're, we're good with federal law. All right, so that's just... When we adopted this LDC, who did we okay. copy this from? Who did we discuss me to? You would seem that this would be, you know, if it's... It's a, it's a living, breathing document. Right. Least, almost like the Constitution. Exactly. And we just, <laughs> apparently we were on the... Wait, why don't you... Several years ago, we hired a firm out of Florida. It was uh, Glenn Easley or Gail Easley. It was Glenn and Gail. Anyhow, they were out of Tampa, St. Petersburg area. They did the Lowndes County uh, land development code for them. Uh, we basically had them come up in the city and county, sat down at the same time, and we're trying to develop this land development code so we would be consistent in everything that we did. Uh, once the, the uh, draft was done, we had several meetings uh, with them. Uh, both uh, city staff and county staff. And then when we got down to, as a matter of fact, we had one meeting at the regional commission at the time with, the, uh, with them as well because they were actually reviewing the document also. And uh, uh, we got it fine-tuned and then the city and county started doing their own thing, but they're very, very close uh, to being the same. There's a few differences. But this document has been uh, edited and re-edited and edited again and proved so many times that, I don't know, Bert, do you have any idea how many times we've redrafted this document? I had four separate drafts that I had, not to count the county draft, and uh, that was over about a four-month period. Well, ever since I've been on council, it seems like every month that we're amending hey, this thing. I will, I will assure you that uh, we are in much better shape than Lowndes County is. They had seven, 745 amendments to their code, and we were able to go through between uh, Bert and Rob and me and Houston and other staff members over four months or five month period of time. We, we fine tuned it as close as we could get it. And uh, we're still, I assure you, that we're not through. We're going to continue to find things. We're going to continue to find federal and state law that may be in contradict each other. So and and that's what happens here. And yeah, it's, it's always, always changing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, this just disturbs me more that we were not allowing for religious groups to meet downtown. I mean, that's the basic. Well, it's going to be we're just. Still not. But the but the issue, as I understand, one of the things that you it's not just. Uh, it, it, parking was was a big issue when you talk about a religious facility and you know downtown parking for the merchants and depending on when they would have you know their service would be nobody would have control over that and since you know parking is not controlled downtown as far as restricting parking spaces in downtown commercial so uh, that was one issue there's also another issue as far as economic development when you have a, a, a storefront church downtown I mean 
studies have shown that that prohibits development. So there's other, there are other reasons about why religious facilities were excluded. And quite frankly, Wes, I mean, when you get down some of these issues that we address with the Land Development Code, it's not something that you really can, you don't know about until the issue presents itself. And then when you look at the issue, you say, okay, we need to have a fix. A good example, I mean, it's just like the, 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 the signs that we were picking up. We decided we want to reduce the fines, you know, to, to pick up your signs. So I, I think as we go through this and the issues come up, uh, we identify the issue and it looks like it's something that the council thinks needs to be tweaked, then we can tweak it. But I don't disagree with Larry. I think as we move forward and, and issues come up, you know, as the years go by, you all may take a look at it and say, I think we might, we need a change. And, and so it's, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think that that's just the nature of the beast. And it, again, it's kind of a living, breathing document, you know, as we move forward. And that, you know, there's, we've had some, you know, I think before we had just a, we had a two where there should have been a three. Those things are just, uh, like I said, Blair said, we spent hours upon hours going through each one of these chapters trying to make sure we caught everything. And, uh, but I, I can't say that, that, that we did. And we'll correct them as we go along. But I think it's a good document. Uh, but it, it, it'll be improved on as we move forward and the issues present themselves. All right, so this is removing clubs and lodges, private. So if it's obviously if it's a public club or whatnot, I mean, you know what I mean, as far as they, they're going to be allowed to meet. It's just private. That's correct. So that's like the Elks Lodge, you know, the Masons. But again, one of the things you need to understand is that when you talk about a religious facility as defined on the LDC, what's prohibited in downtown commercial is to have a religious worship service. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't prohibit them from you know, having a, a pageant. So like if the Elks Lodge or the Kiwanis Club wants to sponsor a, you know, Miss America or whatever, then they can sponsor that you know, downtown because it's, it's not a private meeting mm -hmm. uh, and or if a religious organization wants to do the same thing, they can go ahead and sponsor an event, have it down in downtown commercial, as long as it's not a religious service you know, is defined under the LDC. So it's not like you're, they, they can still do things downtown, they just can't have a, a worship service or they can't have their private meeting, you know, downtown. Wes, that, um, <clears throat> that's general, that's kind of a, a general, when you look at downtown development and how most downtowns are established with their zoning for downtown commercial mm -hmm. development, most of them do prohibit um, an active church organization from being in a downtown. Um, that's, that's kind of a common standard practice. So it's not that um, it's, it's all related to zoning. It's not that they couldn't assemble, you know, and those kind of things. They just can't have an active worship center downtown. So if they wanted to come in and say, use Tifton Gardens mm -hmm. for a concert on a Saturday afternoon or something, that would be prohibited, but they just can't have that worship center located on the Or a worship mountain. service. Service, yeah. yeah. So they couldn't go to the Garden Club or or some other building and actually have a worship service because it's so what we're doing is it's the use it's not necessarily the, the structure that you're looking at and so when you talk about zoning you're talking about what use a, a great example is is that uh, adult entertainment is not allowed in downtown commercial which means that, that you know somebody couldn't come in and have a uh, Burlesque. A burlesque show downtown because those are top opposite ends of the spectrum. Let's just say, Sorry. let's just say, a church organization wants uh, to have a concert at the TIFF the theater. Right. And you all renting that out? Mm -hmm. No, they no, they can do that. They can do that. And if they, and if in part of their concert, they're having somewhat of a not a, I guess a preacher standing there, but they do make rhetoric that's seems to be of a preaching standpoint or having a service. I mean what I mean what I would contemplate is somebody, you know, when somebody wants to make an application uh, to use a building downtown for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And if it's a religious organization or a club or a lodge, then they would define what, what use that's going to be. I don't see particularly that we're going to be policing exactly what's going to be said there, but as long as what they're representing to us is a use that's not consistent with being a worship service or a private meeting you know, of their club, then mm -hmm. uh, then I think we go forward and let me, you know, approve the use and, and, and the, the use of the building. Uh, I don't think we're going to be the policemen as whether or not they're going to, yeah. you know. I understand. But I, I really think that what, what we're looking at is 
generally the regular use of a building, you know, for the purposes of worship or for the purposes of public <coughs> meetings. And that's really what we're looking at. When you start talking about a single event, uh, certainly it should not be a worship service, it should not be a private meeting, but, uh, and, I, and I don't think that's going to be difficult to, you know, to enforce. I think the main thing that, I, that we need to do for sure is that we've got to treat everybody the same. And that's, what, that's the main purpose of the test amendment, so that we're on the equal, equal footing and we're treating everybody the same and we're not you know, treading on, on federal law. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? <coughs> okay, we're moving on to item number four. <clears throat> Mr. Arnold, that's a resolution provided for an enterprise zone application from Lon and Paula Kamenis for a business located at 147 Love Avenue. And I need to recuse myself. Um, I work with Mr. and Ms. Kamenis on this transaction, so I will step out while y'all discuss. Okay. You uh, <coughs> Ms. Smith. Yes. Uh, what about item five? Is there any conflict there as well? Um, I don't know. I'll let the city attorney answer that. Um, the next applicant is for um, a real estate office. It's not mine. It's it's a it's one of my um, associates, but it's not a division of our company. Um, would there be any reason to go ahead and recuse myself for that as well? I don't mind. I mean, I'll be happy to to do. That. I, I, maybe I don't understand the relationship. This is somebody. This is, this is another real estate company. It's not my real estate company. It's another real estate company that's applying for the um, incentives for downtown. So I didn't, just didn't know by nature of them being a real estate company, as, as I am a real estate company, if that would be any kind of problem. No, okay. that would not. Okay, well, there's definitely one for, for the chemist applications. Okay. All right, we'll see you in a little while. Okay. Okay, Law and Paul Kemenis are applying for an enterprise zone, uh, have submitted an enterprise zone application. Uh, they're doing some rehabilitation work and plan to have their offices down there, their attorney offices. Um, Included in your packet is uh, an estimate of what we expect that they would be able to receive credit for. And it's uh, around $6,600. Of course, we're not going to know that until a building is, is reassessed upon completion of, of the rehab work. Um, and their credits will be actual costs as far as the tax abatements go. Um, once that happens, um, their building permit fees, their landfill tipping fees, and their business license fees are are accurate. So, um, of course, the staff's recommending approval, um, and we're looking forward to having them in the downtown area. The lawn's over on uh, Second Street now, anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where is 147? Still in the Apple building. Huh? Old Eccles Jewelers. Oh, yeah, okay. That'd be a good, good location. That's where the tipped area chopper was. It's the old farmer's thing, too. They did. Yeah, I did. The other enterprise on application comes from Melissa Burgess. She well, now we can get Julie back yeah. on that, right? Oh, yes. with Active Real Estate. Um, she has purchased 319 South Main. She's, uh, she's applying for tax uh, incentives for the building permit fee. Um, we do not know the landfill tipping fees. This project was underway before they applied uh, for the application, so they've already uh, had some costs so she's trying to find the uh, receipts for the tipping fees that she paid through Golden Waste. Oh. Um, okay. So we're not sure if we'll be able to do anything about those, but we can go ahead and reimburse her on her building permit fee, and then of course their business license fees for two years, and the uh, tax abatements. And we're looking right now. We're looking at about forty-two hundred dollars. That's an estimate for them. That's that 10 year tax abatement? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, well, that's good. The staff people. recommending approval. Wow, for that. That's real good. 
Any questions, y'all? All right, let's uh, <clears throat> move on to item number six, which is a resolution providing for alcoholic beverage license for Dick Swing, located at 3310, 3310 Highway 82 West. Yes, sir. Dick Swings is applying for an alcohol license uh, to provide for the sale of beer, wine, and distilled spirits on site consumption retail. Um, the cost of their license and application is a total of $4,100. We've run a background check on Tyler Sylvester, and uh, he's, it reveals no violations in the last five years. So staff is running an approval. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. We're wrecking approval of the, recommending approval of the okay. application. All right. Any questions? <coughs> Item number seven, the uh, committee report on permit fees. Uh, Council person. We need to say something about it. Oh, we'll the press that. Okay. What? Do it? Stay up, please. We'll do it seven. I'm sorry. That's okay. Seven, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as y'all know, after much discussion on this topic uh, a few workshops ago, Chris and I uh, took your talking points to Larry and Bert. Uh, and we are ready to make a recommendation to council that for the residential permit fees uh, from zero to two thousand dollars be at no cost from two thousand and one dollar to ten thousand dollars will be a fifty dollar permit fee and then from ten thousand and one up uh, would be a half percent uh, for commercial permit fees uh, we're recommending zero to two thousand dollars be at no cost uh, from $2,001 to $10,000 be $100. And from $10,001 on up will be a 1% fee. And we feel sure. that this is a uh, tier fee structure is fair and promotes uh, construction in our community. Wes, what was the 2001 to 10000 What was that fee? For residential or commercial? Oh, commercial. Uh, be $100. And for the 2000 to 10000 on residential, it would be how much? $50. $50. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you tell me again what it is above the 10001 for commercial? 10001 above would be 1%. Okay. Okay. Any questions? I like it. Chris and I both. Mr. Mayor, good job. Yes, sir. we're going to uh, have this on the agenda for the April 6th meeting. Uh -huh. But the, uh, pending approval of council, the fees won't go into effect until July 1st, the new fiscal year. That's right. Okay, July 1st. And permits that have already been. Uh, any, any applications that have already been requested will be honored. Will be honored. At the current rate. Yes, currently. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, this will be voted on at our April 6th public April. meeting in April. April. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Well, we've got two meetings today. We've got a. Don't we have a retreat April 2nd? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this will be the first meeting. First, first, meeting. first regular six. scheduled meeting. Regular right. scheduled meeting. And it will be at Tipton City. Excellent. Where? I was wondering if that's what it was. Oh, really? It'll be at the mine. Great. Yeah, okay, all right. We're finally moving forward. Great. It's good news. Bring your guns. <laughs> There's something about they can't come in here, but they can over there, right? That's right, because it's a municipal court. I don't want my friend Wes to get shot. He's about as big a target as I am. We're going to have No, baby, I'm done. We'll have, <laughs> we'll have security there. We will have to pay there. Right, sure. so then that, that will prohibit guns from being brought into the That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's just wise this day and time. They always seem to shoot the mayor. Somebody in Texas, the mayor voted. I wants the guy to the wonder why. Big target and I'm real slow. Well, they <laughs> always shoot the mayor. Oh, well. They did not shoot the deputy. They don't shoot me. That's right. Yeah, baby. <laughs> 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 number eight, number eight. No, no, we no, have right. to okay. yes, we 
All right, sir. Sorry. Where's the devil? Uh, we're meeting. We're, we're out. Well, I see this shot. I'm getting it all around. The other board. All, the only thing on the agenda is the historic preservation. Okay, okay. Uh, Erica Johnson, Mark San Middleton, and Mark Peterman's <clears throat> terms expire May 31st, 2015. I understand that Mark San Middleton does not wish to continue serving. You're kidding me. Is that correct, Bert? That's the last word that I got from her that when her term expires, she is not going to come back on. She may have changed her mind. Is she the chairman now? She is. She told me she might not re up. I she could have changed her mind, but the last I word have I got not was. I have not talked with any of them. Just letting you well, know. That's about time back. She told me she was. So Mark Sand doesn't want to, but who else wants to stay? I don't know. I haven't talked with okay. any of them. So we'll just find that out. I'll just check with them and let you all know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no other questions? We're going to move on now to, to the call meeting. Uh, I'd have a vote for that before we call the meeting. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. It's a call meeting door. Sorry? It's a call meeting door. Well, it's called over. And having done that, I have a report board mayor. Yes. Uh, I would request that council allow for the amendment of the call meeting agenda to include item six from the workshop for approval, pending approval of items one and two for the workshop. I'm sorry, item. Nine. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, number nine. Item nine. Yes. Approval of item nine. Yes, approval out of nine. I make a motion that we accept Mr. Reiner's suggestion to amend the called meeting agenda to include item six from the workshop in addition to item nine of the called meeting. Second. I've got a motion second for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, please sit up and raise your right hand. Say aye. 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 That's unanimous, Ms. Reiner. Okay, we are in the call meeting and we'll. We'll do number six first, Larry, and number nine. Number nine. Number nine, the order providing for a text amendment to the City of Tipton Land Development Code relating to tattoo establishments in relation to alcohol license establishments. I uh, will uh, accept a motion. So moved. Second. That's a motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please sit about raise your right hand and say aye. 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 That's unanimous, Ms. Rome. Now, item number six, resolution providing for alcoholic beverage license for Dick Wings, located at 3310 Highway 82 West. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion for two seconds. Third, I'm not going to read this. Third, any further discussion? <coughs> seeing none, all in favor, please sit the board raising your hand and saying aye. 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 That is unanimous, Ms. Rome. And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. And now what, I want to remind everybody we'll have what, what is uh what, what is your brand on? March the thirtieth. March thirtieth. March thirtieth, okay. Yes. Alright. You can come by tomorrow and pick up your alcohol license. Fantastic. You can well, get we'll, it to the state immediately. We're glad yes, to have we you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. My I car could probably find its way. I used to go to Locos all the time. Man. <laughs> you My did. car could probably still make it. <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> um April the 2nd. Is, is that correct, y'all? April the 2nd, we're going to have our retreat. Yes. That's at 8.30 a.m. to 12. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Larry did say he was famous. That's what I heard. Is that right? Hey, would, if, it, if I got a feature to get you to the retreat, you we'll feature. Okay. You want breakfast? Yeah. We'll feature. We'll feature. We'll feature. We'll feature. We'll feature. Yeah. You have to have breakfast. Okay. You, you, might, want, breakfast. you might want to dash out at and we might finish early. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> where are we going to meet? Have we decided where? The Peanut Museum. The That's Peanut, the peanut the Museum. Welcome Center. The Peanut Welcome Center. Agarama. Oh, 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 oh. At the Welcome Center. Are you talking about your house? Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Rob. And, and also, ahead. Our, next, our next public meeting will be in the mine. That's April the 6th. April 6th. April 6th. We'll be meeting in the mine. We'll be leaving 
this good place here and going back I'm going to miss tonight. these broken chairs. Yeah, that's how yeah, they should not be broken tonight. They're not broken tonight. That's fine. Sure. Last night the last meeting, we finally get them fixed. Thank y'all for coming. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.